as truly wonderful as it is to dream of things to make, how much of our dreams are secretly filtered by an inner voice saying what we can or cannot do? Do I only dream of what's within reach? And if so, how can I push beyond that into, oh, right. I asked you guys on Instagram what you dream of me making and two of you sent me these ideas. This is an adequate challenge and we shall begin. There are a few things going on with this dress that really help it to have such a immaculate fit, which I will have to attempt to recreate. First off, the bust is fit so well. Part of what makes that possible is the use of the three ties, one above the bust so that it can tighten up here, one below, and then one more closer to the rib cage to get you the perfect fit all the way across. Another feature that's adding to the shapeliness of this dress is that the seams are visible and add a line to give you the hourglass shape. And then I think the cap sleeves, yeah, they're fitted real snug. And if they were too tight, you would look like you're suffering a little. And if they were too loose, I feel like they would float in a way that wouldn't quite look like the nightwear lingerie situation. This is the pattern that I picked out from my Little Low kit, which brings me to the techniques we will get to practice with this dress. We're gonna get to do pattern manipulation. The neckline needs to be redrawn to suit the deeper neckline of the dress. And we also get to do slash and spread. These sleeves are relatively fitted, but when you zoom in on the inspo dress, there's quite a bit of gathering here at the top and then again where the sleeve ends. I'm gonna see what this pattern looks like on paper. Oh, right, and then fabric. I went with a black eyelet lace that has these cute little polka dots. They're very small. I also found the leftover fabric from back when I made this dress, and I think it's gonna be perfect for dress number two. The pattern manipulation in this dress was not like overly complex, but I will take a second to do a little sewing education and talk about my slash and spread. So in my case, I'm dealing with a sleeve. I want all of the bulk to be happening right at the top of the shoulder and then again continuing to this outer edge of the arm, but I don't want a whole bunch of bulk in the armpit area. So step one of slash and spread, slash. You only slash the area where you're trying to increase the amount of fabric and then spread. You move the slashed pieces apart. I dug up some photos from the recent con film festival to give you some examples of like what slash and spread can accomplish in a more formal dressmaking environment. So this one, there is some slash and spread that you could say is going on around the neckline. You can see like from here to the shoulder, there isn't any excess gathering. It's laying relatively flat, but from here to here, there is a lot of gathering. And so what you could do is you have just like a plain tunic pattern, but between the two neck points, you do slash, 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 spread, cut it, and then you have lots of material to gather back together into this gathered detail in the front. The fun of this dress is essentially some kind of like giant flower petal, but in order to achieve all those tiny little folds, it could be slashed along the whole way, spread, you cut out a fabric that's much larger than the final item, gather, 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 and then you get this like textured flower petal. And with this bodice, you could have started with like a very simple strapless sweetheart, but then you slash it this way on this side, spread it underneath here. You slash this one this way, spread it, shrink it. Now you've got all the material you need to gather it back into its original shape. But like I said, slash and spread, she can get fancy. So if you take another look at what I created, I preserved the armhole areas. I don't want any excess fabric there. I just did slashes along the crest of the sleeve. Cut straight down. American flag treatment. Red, white, red, white, red, white. Equidistance. That's all I'm trying to say when I'm referencing the American flag. I don't, I can't think of anything else. On the topic of trying to make new things, sorry, my voice is a little fried right now. I was at a wedding on the weekend. I'm so excited to shout out this video's sponsor. It is my favorite way to get dinner on the table, HelloFresh. For the last two years, ever since we had a baby, and therefore had way less time on our hands, Dan and I have been trying 
all sorts of dinner options. Honestly, guys, we have tried them all. HelloFresh is the one that we consistently come back to over and over again. Maybe you've heard of them before, but if you've never tried HelloFresh, they have 40 recipes that you can choose from weekly. I personally also like to pick recipes that I've never cooked before, so it's like a mini cooking lesson. And because there's so much choice, we just never feel like we're in a recipe rut. Today, I am cooking Southwest-inspired cheesy beef burgers. Mmm, it looks delicious. I don't know what it is, but I always feel the most successful, fulfilled when I can end the day with a great family dinner. Like nine out of 10 of my meltdowns around 6, 7 p.m. are because I'm exhausted from the day, trying to hold it together and do my best all day. And so I just, just want dinner to go well. <laughs> but my point is with HelloFresh, I find I'm just never ever worried about the outcome. And so instead of being stressed out the entire time I'm cooking, I'm like actually having fun. I'm sipping a drink, you know, sometimes just water. I'm showing Marla what I'm cooking. I'm chit-chatting and catching up with Dan. The instructions honestly are foolproof. Like I'm out here filming this with you while I'm cooking. And the nice thing about the whole delivery system is that the ingredients are picked at peak freshness. It always tastes delicious and I genuinely serve it every time with pride. Back when Marla was really little, the instructions and the pre-portioned ingredients were actually so easy to follow that sometimes I would start a dinner and Dan would take over and we would still have an amazing meal by the end of it. Sometimes I had to go breastfeed Marla or handle some kind of small emergency. I just like can't even imagine another scenario where one person starts in the kitchen and the other person can finish when both of us are like not experienced chefs. For all the different situations where we didn't feel like we had enough time, HelloFresh was actually more convenient than grocery shopping and it was 25% less expensive than takeout, which honestly felt amazing because I hate that feeling of having takeout all the time. If you guys want to experience all these benefits that I'm talking about, just go to hellofresh.com and use code WITHWENDY16 at the checkout. You will get 16 free meals plus free shipping. This is the kind of deal that I snagged when I started on HelloFresh and I've been loving it ever since. I cooked this in less than 30 minutes. If you haven't tried HelloFresh yet, you have to give it a try. HelloFresh.com, use code WITHWENDY16 at the checkout. 16 free meals plus free shipping. Honestly, you will not ever regret. It's so good. It looks like it came from a restaurant. I cooked this. Mmm! Yeah. I'm about to cut this fabric and I don't know why I get so scared, but I'm scared. I think some of my panic comes from the fact that I still have this sleeve pattern left over and I think it needs to go up here, but I'm just hoping like that my fold over spacing is sufficient to cut out two sleeves. Oh, oh no, that's not the that's not the green direction. Oh my gosh. I did it. Front pieces, back pieces, sleeve. Time to sew. So like I mentioned in my last video, if you actually want a really detailed breakdown of the sewing steps and little, uh, I don't know, tricks or moments where I had to apply some sewing expertise, there's now a link in the description. And I actually think that by following it, you will be able to make this too. And the reason for that is because we've been having a lot of fun here on this channel sewing different things. But I feel like for those of you who actually really want to learn and improve your skills, my videos have gotten maybe a little bit like too chaotic for that. We need to cue some music. I have a lot of pinning to do. Well, I regret to inform you that that was the easy part, but now it actually has to fit. Okay, I'm really happy with my flares. I freehanded those. Can't tell what is going on up here. This is how I thought this shoulder would turn out, but see how the fabric looks like it naturally just wants to lay like this? I think I'm just gonna end up putting a little dart here. It's not ideal. 
Okay, actually, I just fiddled around with it a lot and it decided it might not be as bad as I fear. I'm gonna sew the front to the back and then assess. Okay, well, she's on. Oh, oh. It's not as bad as I feared. I think it's gonna be okay. Almost feels like I gotta put the zipper in now in order to fully be sure about the darts. Recently, I got my assistant, Leticia, to organize my entire notions bin. Yes! Which is good because then I don't buy something that I already have. I was sewing too fast and I sewed the invisible zipper wrong. <sighs> Try it on again. The fit is actually quite snug. I'm amazed. I'll just pinch a couple of these darts to get them to be a bit more snug. And I think I will cut into this a little bit more. fit is much slimmer. I'm really glad I did not panic when I thought it wasn't working. Yeah. Pretty happy with my reshaped neckline and so I think next is the sleeves. From here to here where the slash and spread happens, I need to put in the gathering stitches. I did close it into a loop. I'll show you how it looks. <laughs> I feel like a hairdresser. I'm like leaning back, seeing how it sits, looking at the symmetry. Did I cut the right and left equally? I'm getting more and more nervous as things go on. I'm just gonna keep going. I'm taking my elastic, trying to figure out a way to like measure exactly the width that I need to do a nice little wrap around on my arm. The first step is just doing a big zigzag stitch to secure the elastic to the sleeve. And then I'm gonna fold it over and do one more zigzag stitch just to lock it all in. I did it. I'm gonna finish the other sleeve and I'll show you. Oh, hi. Mommy's taking a picture? Yeah. See ya. Okay, so at this point, the final ribbon detail was actually turning me into a huge chicken. So here's me out and about enjoying the dress before I potentially ruin it forever. While I debate the ribbon, I did not forget about dress number two. There are some things that make this dress a little bit challenging. Now you're looking at the hip and you say, aha, slash and spread. Good job. We're going to do a bit of that, but we're also going to be doing much more dart manipulation on this one. I'm going to dig up my little collection of Khan's photos again, but basically most dresses that are fitted require some sort of dart or gathering action in this area and it's because you are not flat. I can't believe this example existed so perfectly, but Halsey has a dress with no darts, no gathering. This is a choice. I'm not necessarily saying like what was done here was wrong, but I'm just showing it to show like this is what happens when there's no darts. Once we start talking darts, there are some pretty standard placements. Here's this dress by Jenny. You get a center seam, you get darts here, 
you get a side seam. Jordan Dunn, straight up and down darts. Sydney Sweeney, straight up and down darts. Very, very simple. My hawk, okay, still straight up and down, but I like how it was built into like a little bat wing sculpted situation. And Gemma Chan, straight up and down. But if you don't wanna do straight up and down darts, you just gotta find some other way to tuck the excess fabric away. This is another Gemma Chan look. There are no darts, but the fabric is purposefully gathered below the bust, and what could have been darts is now just like blended, gathered fabric. Jasmine Tooks, these ones have been migrated to give you a super angular hourglass situation. Scarlett Johansson, oh, opposite approach of Jasmine Tooks. The darts are pointing outwards to the waist. It doesn't line up with the skirt darts. I don't know how I feel about that, but those were the choices made. Jennifer Lawrence, oh my gosh, personally, I thought this dart bust treatment was so beautiful. It is straight up and down below the bust, but I feel like over here, this little side spot is also helping to tuck some fabric away. So back to our dress. There are no visible darts from the bust to the waist. There are no visible darts from the waist to the hip. And thus, I will attempt some dart manipulation. All right, I know that was a bit long-winded, but I just want us all to appreciate the details. Waist, side, armhole, shoulder, neck hole, center line of symmetry. First, you can go ahead and redraw a line from the armpit to the neck hole because we need to create a halter top shape. Second, this is the dart that needs to go. It does not exist in the dress that we're aiming for. Simply treat this as your pivot point. We're gonna rotate and you get this. I'm hoping that there's enough fabric up here to scrunch it up and create that gathered look. The skirt is just like a standard little pencil skirt situation. You've got one little dart to help cinch in the waist over the bum. This is the front of the skirt, again with a little dart. I think I'm gonna make this as an underlayer and then draft one extra piece to be like the flap on top that has no darts. Which looks like, which way am I going? This. Again, there's a link in the description if you wanna watch the really detailed breakdown of this, but basically I manipulated the front pattern to get rid of the darts along the top waist. I did a good old slash and spread over here to get those hip gathers. Leticia has already helped me cut out the fabric and I have the darts pinned and I have been procrastinating because I'm scared. So it's time to do it. With the skirt top layer, I did a gathering stitch on this little ruched part, I'm trying to get the bottoms to line up because that will show me how much I need to be gathering the fabric up here. All right, I'm just gonna sew them together. Welcome back. I have big. <laughs> I have basted my little ruffle in place. It's pretty cute. I think it's got some good movement. I'm gonna attach it to the back of the skirt and then we can kind of see it on. <laughs> Leticia is here. Where is she? There. <laughs> Working on the strap for the dress. And Sagwa is like very busy inspecting this sewing machine. <laughs> to know for sure until we hang it from the halter top. Okay, the zipper is in. <laughs> it's taken so much work. However, I really should have gotten a much longer zipper and I'm like milking every millimeter the zipper can give me. I made it! <laughs> I already tried going the other way, and that is a no-go. So now, I get to finally gather the top. 
if I can get this off. Oh my god. Gravity, help me! <laughs> it was also not easy to get it onto the mannequin. I drew a line for where I think I need to cut off some excess. And up here, I tried to replicate the pleat style that's in the original. And then I also need to cut off this to match this. The tatas. Why are they rock hard? <laughs> oh my god. I've pinned the dress so it's folded right down the middle and locked in. I'm pretty sure I'm going for a U shape. Curving in, straight up. I did it. I didn't want as big of a gap as the sample, so I just did like the <laughs> truly the bare minimum. I'm just gonna hem these edges and then attach the ribbons. I finished attaching the neck strap to the blue dress. It's okay guys, it's um, it's one of those like, this was a learning experience. <laughs> but I gotta push through, bringing the black thread back in. We are gonna do the risky front ties. I have six ribbons cut out here. Uh, let's do this. I did it. Between this and the source material, I'm just gonna say it for myself. I'm really proud of myself for this one. Cap sleeves, sweetheart neckline, very slim fit. It feels so good. The ribbons definitely do transport it from day dress into more of like a nightwear lingerie territory. This dress though, on the other hand, um, could have been better. I would have gotten a good mark from like a technical student standpoint. I hit the hip slash and spread, the mini skirt and the halter and the pleats in the front and the dart manipulation. But I think maybe this is, was just like not the right material. It also is just way too short of a skirt for my comfort. But with that said, we're gonna head out and I'm gonna show them off for you. Hi Janine, hi Irene. I made the dresses that you guys sent me and I so appreciate the ways that they whew, pushed me out of my comfort zone working with lace, which I have not worked with in a really long time. And on top of that, making a dress that's so fitted. And I don't even think I've ever made anything so sleep -wary. It was really cute in the end. I'm really glad with how that one turned out. And for Irene, you mentioned in your personal note that this dress has been living rent free in your head and I get it, it's really cute. But I actually found from the experience of sewing it, maybe in some weird way you are better off without this one because it's so hard to wear. It might be one of those things where it like looks really good on the model, but then once you try it on, it's not so practical because like I don't get it. I feel like I made it pretty decently Oh, but I just I had a really hard time taking videos and photos in this one. But thank you so much to everyone who sent in ideas. Leticia and I had so much fun looking through all of them. Um, if you guys want us to do this again, let me know in the comments. And thank you guys so much for being here. Bye-bye.